What's up, kids? Peter Von Panda here. Hey, wanted to bust out probably the oldest watch in my collection and just show it to you. Um, it's not so much that it's an interesting watch in that I've had it a long time and is kind of meaningful to me because it kind of got me into watches. Was it the first watch I've ever owned? No, it's not the first watch I ever owned. I told you that was already a Timex uh, baby blue Snoopy watch. Um, but this was the first real watch. You know, after I had that uh, a plastic watch as a kid, I didn't really wear any watches. And then on my 16th birthday, uh, my parents gave me this watch. And why that's important is I grew up in Detroit. Uh, I'm adopted and my family didn't have a lot of money growing up. And in fact, at the time, this may have been the single most expensive gift that I'd ever received from my parents. So it was actually a pretty big investment for them um, and a pretty big spend for them, especially as a gift. It was at the time, basically a hundred dollar watch. Uh, it was probably the most expensive watch that uh, any of my peers wore and it was it's a great watch yeah, obviously it's you can see the second hand is running now that hasn't meant that it's done it without some maintenance the watch band that it came with was kind of a, uh, a vintage leather brown leather band not too different from this but I think it had a couple of uh, uh, folded over um, tabs here from the leather uh, and so there was a little bit of reinforcement there and it was a little lighter and didn't have contrasting stitching But it was very similar to this. Uh, this is an aftermarket watch band one that it could fit I think it's it's like a crazy weird 18 or 17 millimeter watch band So finding watch bands for this that aren't really short is actually kind of difficult. I don't wear this watch anymore um, Obviously if I got it on my 16th birthday, it's about 20 years old and I have had it repaired because it's kind of important to me. Uh, one time the crown broke, which is kind of common on quartz watches. Uh, the watch uh, repair shop uh, put in a new crown for me. The, the battery's been replaced a number of times. In fact, sometimes I've left it, let it sit for years not running. Uh, if you have a quartz watch, just you want to get those batteries replaced when they stop running because they can leak the chemicals that are inside. Uh, and it's a small watch. so side to side it advertises as 38 millimeters this is i believe on the logo and you can correct me if i'm wrong that that square logo the square swiss army logo is the winger logo the shield version is for victorinox um, one of the things that i might point out here is that given the age of the watch i think the logo is just a smidge faded it's more kind of like <laughs> hot pink now instead of a, kind of a dark red the hand and I think it was kind of more of the color of the second hand there, which is still a nice deep red. There's a little loom, as you can see, on the watch hands itself, where it looks like a kind of a very faint line or minty green. And then there is some loom right on the hour markers. You can see it there where it's also a little minty green. Date window, quartz movement, pretty standard. This one, as it says right there in the middle, was an Eddie Bauer edition. And I don't know that um, there are Eddie Bauer edition Swiss Armies anymore. I kind of suspect they are. But it kind of brings me to this watch being a 20 year old design. It is still available and you can still buy these online. They're very good. You know, the, this crystal is the original crystal. I certainly wasn't trying to baby it. There, there are some really fine scratches in it. Um, I used to wear this everywhere and it's not beat up too badly. The the bezel is kind of interesting because it has these, these protruding lugs and they work pretty well, I guess, to protect that crystal. They're kind of like prongs holding in a diamond and you can see that it gives the, the watch a little bit of uh, forgiveness for hitting. It might be a little hard to see here if it hits things from smashing the glass. So that's kind of cool and actually a pretty smart design. Um, Breitling uses it on uh, some of their watches. It's kind of a little bit more of a, a older thing to do. Now we don't see a lot of these kind of riders on, on bezels. And the bezel itself used to be, although it still has a little bit of polish, used to be polished and the case was brushed. So it kind of had a nice little two-tone. Um, white dial and some you know, a square border around there, kind of like on my TCM Fiat. Uh, and, you know, just a, it, it's, it's, it's a pretty white dial. It's, it's kind of, I, I'd say almost pearl without kind of that really heavy metallic flake. 
the Arabic numerals here are silver, and it's like the dial was painted white, I feel, and then the numbers pressed or, or, or stamped into the dial. Everything was painted white, and then they just kind of filed off or kind of sanded off the top layer, because if you look at the numbers, they have a little bit of that white paint around the edges, so that kind of says to me that that's kind of how they manufactured it. Uh, water resistance 330 feet, it says. Um, I can tell you that when I was a kid, I splashed around, wore this everywhere through Boy Scouts, etc., etc., and the watch kept on uh, ticking. There's a date window right there, and what I did find out is it's a one position, um, one stop on the crown, and so what you have to do to change the date is roll over the midnight, and uh, so it can take a little while if you need to change that. On the back here is where you'll get the model number, and I think if you were, when I was trying to search it and find it, I had to use the 05800, uh, the big EB on the back there for Eddie Bauer, which is kind of cool, um, and then the, you have to have that the tool with the adjusting pins to unscrew the case back here. So uh, pretty easy to maintain spring bars. Um, I have changed this band from canvas to leather. Uh, you know, like I said, over 20 years, you're going to have to... Uh, if you're going to wear it, you're going to wear it out. One of the things that I'll say is one of the reasons I don't wear this is, one, it's far too small for me. Secondly, I also had, because of the kind of how narrow the band is and how big watches have gotten, I had to buy this watch band, even to get it on, in an XL length for this width. You can see it's not a super long watch band anyway. I'm not going to tuck it in there because you can see here. Just, you know, it, if I were to wear it, honestly, everyone would look at it and be like, doesn't actually look that bad in camera, but everyone would be like, "That's you're wearing a pretty small watch, man. And here's where I'm going to let you in a little secret. If you want to find this watch now online, and I'll put a link to where you can get it, because like I said, for $100 back then, this watch has stood the test of time. It is now sold and listed as a ladies watch. That's not a whole lot of surprise to me because of the size and how things are getting bigger. I like larger watches. This one here is, I think, a a 42 or 44 millimeter and just look at this is even black so it's gonna look a little it's gonna print a little smaller than it is but but there you go you know between from a 38 to a 44 you might say well that's not huge but don't forget you're kind of you're growing the the physical area you're growing the real estate and the footprint of the watch just with uh, extending it out. It's like looking at a 16 inch wheel on a car and then the optional 18 inch wheels, the 18 inchers look huge. Um, so here it is, you know, I mean, that's, that's, that's the deal. So almost fits, you know, I mean, like I said, it's, it's, it wouldn't shock you that there's two or three additional millimeters on either side, but you know, that's how it works. So anyway, it's a watch that I don't wear anymore. Uh, I really like it though. It means a lot to me and I keep it and um, you know, I'll always hold on to this watch or maybe give it to someone that's important to me one day. Oh, there it is, 18. So there you there you have it, 18 millimeters. And I'll, I'll tell you what, man, I've had this problem before, but you can see it is 18 millimeters, but 19s are really tight in there. So it's really like an 18 and a half, and that just may be from where or it might be the, the manufacturing of the bands I get, but uh, it's always it's always tough to find watch bands that fit this thing. So Peter Von Band up for the Wenger Eddie Bauer edition Swiss Army uh, Swiss Army watch, which only took me 20 years to review and share with you guys. Out!